Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome back. I'm going to try to look at this week. Hope you've had a good week. Um, definitely not a good week. Um, we're coming out of here. Um, but I hope hope you had some good times in it there, too. I genuinely do. But the, the Venus-Saturn stuff is pretty, pretty tough. Um, for sure. And with Mars and Aries... There's a lot of situations that want to come about that are really hasty and fast. And Saturn here is um, definitely trying to slow that down or stop that somehow. It's interesting how it's come up for me. You know. Anyway. <laughs> Not a good time to get into contracts. <laughs> for sure with Venus Saturn. And um, I've been under some pressure to get into contract. <laughs> like today or tomorrow, and um, that's just not right. I had to say a firm no to that one. Um, it's a bad time to get, like, sign anything or get into new, um, for me, like a housing situation. But, so that's, that's definitely going on. Um, I like the moon and Capricorn in the beginning. The moon and Capricorn was actually applying the square to Chiron instead. So uh, for me, it was probably a bit better than if um, it was just applying the Mars straight out. And once Ch Mars got off Chiron, I started feeling a little bit better too. I've just been struggling with Mars and just been um, kind of tough, but I hope you've been all right. You know, the we're no, we don't do any financial advice here, but, um, you know, Mercury has been in this 45-degree um, angle with, um, oh, Mars there, and that's kind of like a square aspect, so, you know, there has been a lot of transactions going on, I, I'm sure you know, and um, <laughs> you know, I, I just have been seeing that Mercury-Mars, I was kind of interested in what that would mean with more transactions, but, um, you know, Mars cuts, Mars kind of takes things further down, so, uh, good luck out there, um, but, you know, this week looks interesting, we've got, we're going to start on the uh, 19th, <laughs> we got, um, the moon going into Cancer, which, is, which would be quite a change of pace, um, definitely not so erratic and um, things just like popping off. Hopefully, it'll be a little like with our energy, it'll be a little bit better. Um, that's what I'm what I'm looking forward to. I haven't I haven't looked at this week yet. I don't know what's going on. I don't see very many transits. Um, um, this is this is it right here. Looks like Mercury perfects that tr sextile to Jupiter on um, Monday about. And then Venus is trying Pluto and on Algol. So definitely um, some extreme vengeful energy uh, it could be possible going through that with Venus there. And, you know, it's kind of like tying up that, that part of the story we've been going through with, like, the all the placements and going through Taurus and going over that, that point, which was where one of the eclipses was and where the sun was. But I want to thank God who gives wisdom and understanding that we can look into this mystery to the glory of his name in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed in Jesus' name. That's the right name. All right, so we're going to look at um, the 19th here. I thought I pulled up the, the moon thing, but here it is. Let me get that. Let's talk about Mercury Mars again. So Mercury is in a sextile with Mars again by sign. And it's in this semi sextile or uh, semi square aspect, which is kind of abrasive for Mercury. And I think, um, you know, you can't really see the market go one one way so easily. Maybe you can, but it's definitely like more mimics testimony with Mercury and Mars. You know, um, things immediately get cut down, it seems like, with that. But. 
maybe I'll come back to that again. But so as we start, I gotta keep going. As we start the nineteenth. Um, the moon is in. I think it's in um, Pisces by then. If we will. Definitely in Pisces. So it's in Pisces pretty much all day. Um, the, the moon can't see Mars, which um, is good. I hope you can see this. I, I've, I think I've, now that Mercury's about to leave shadow, I've got uh, this little recording set up here down. I noticed that it was super low quality on the, on the chart last week. It's just like managing the file size, like a maximum file size I can use. Um, and if it's too high quality, it'll run out before I get done. So just a little bit of that, but hopefully you can see it. You can see the symbolism and the num and the, you can read the numbers, I hope. But anyway, we'll get, we'll get to this. Uh, so when the moon enters Pisces, the moon will square Mercury. Um, so it's like Saturday night that the moon enters Pisces. Um, you know, probably will be a little less heavy. I mean, a little bit, a little kind of hectic energy with the moon squaring that Mercury and Gemini, and you know, that's really it. But as we go through Sunday, the moon just makes the sextile to Uranus, and I think the, um, you know, the Venus Saturn square was like really back here, so that kind of difficulty we, we remarked on earlier, that kind of thing, um, will be kind of coming to a pitch here. It looks like, um, but I don't know. The moon actually won't be like kind of in the doing Mars here. So it's like more about like, do you want to accept this burden? Do you want to accept this responsibility or not? Um, can you say no to it? Like, I think, I think um, will help here probably for me. For me, um, because you know, with the Saturn stuff, like you haven't taken it seriously, uh, especially like for the day chart people. You know, you've been hopefully like honoring what Saturn is trying to build in your chart and like this this Venus thing is just like it's like maybe like something kinda that could be helpful but it's like ultimately like not not gonna be not gonna work or will, will be restrictive, I think. Uh, it's kinda how showing up for me. Um, something I can't really can't really help I can't really take, um, because it will you know, there's there's a it's a big, big cost in terms of restriction that I'd have to go go through in that case. So, and I think when that kind of stuff shows up, you gotta be able to say say no to to opportunities, um, you know, because they're just not they're not really gonna work. Um, okay, but that's um, beginning of June or uh, beginning of the nineteenth there. So the moon just squares Mercury. Um, Maybe Pisces, probably a little, you know, it's kind of taking things as they come. With the Moon and Pisces, um, things, the situation is not being totally clear with the Moon with Neptune. Um, I don't, I'm not sure it's quite a Pisces thing. It's like more of a Neptune being there thing. It's like confusion. I'm not really sure where things are going to go um, with that on um, through Monday, I guess. But on the late night, the moon will sextile Uranus. It, will, um, it won't even do this. So it'll actually just end the day with the moon sextile to Uranus. <clears throat> you know, it'll probably be a little, little high energy in a way. Um, so it could be interesting. Um, but the moon will the next day apply to Neptune and then to sextile Uranus and uh, sextile Venus and um, sextile Pluto at the same time, so Venus and Pluto are pretty close by a trine. Um, it means it Pisces. Let's look at that on the other chart. Am I looking at the right thing? I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, no. So, well, actually, yeah. So the moon will slip, separate from Neptune and apply to Venus and Pluto. So, you know, coming out of a, 
um, an unknown kind of situation. So kind of like all day on Monday is a little, it's like more foggy, it's more confusing. It's, um, you know, there's situations that are, um, don't make sense or in many ways could be, you know, just don't, you can't know, you can't really be sure how to interpret what, what you're seeing or what you're doing. I think it's kind of like the Neptune Pisces thing, like opposing Virgo, but, um, this is like on Neptune's side, so we're really a part of it, we're really into it. It could be, for better or worse. But the moon will sex sextile Venus all day too, by the visible aspect, so kind of on Monday, it looks kind of like a nice day. I don't really see anything messing with that too much. Moon can't see Mars, moon can't see Saturn either, so kind of a reprieve, possibly, um, throughout the day. On Monday, it could be a nice day. So. After that, though, well, uh, once the moon separates from Venus, it'll be with Pluto. So even as, like, it might be nice, but, you know, this Neptune-Pluto stuff is, is going on in the background. Um, uh, whether we like it or not. So that'll be kind of something to be aware of, that there's something deeper going on than, like, kind of this nice thing that's going on on the surface. So be aware of your yourself. And don't get, um, you know, abstracted out too much. <laughs> but I think you can do either with the Pisces stuff. You can kind of take it as you as you want. But the moon will be separating from Pluto and applying to the square of the sun and then enter Aries at the, in the evening. So moon is waning in light. It's not um, super high energy. It's, you know, all being, you know, <laughs> just like kind of taking in, taking stock of where you're actually at on this evening probably good idea. So the moon will be entering Aries on um, Tuesday night or Monday night. Yeah, Monday night. And then it'll apply to Jupiter all morning. So very fiery, very active, forward moving energy. Um, good stuff all around in a way. Um, it is ruled by Mars. You know, we got Jupiter, Mars. Whenever we have Jupiter, we have Mars also. So it's not um, not all too good, but in a way. But the moon will be separating from Jupiter and applying to Mercury, but sextile. So you see, Mercury has passed Jupiter. Um, so Mercury is moving past Jupiter. I think Mercury's last aspect was to Jupiter, though. So Mercury is picking up on this Jupiter energy. I mean, the moon is um, in two different ways, like right with Jupiter and you know, with the light that Mercury is translating. So the moon catches up to Mercury and kind of is, is on board with what Mercury's um, um, message from Jupiter is in a way. But the moon will separate from Mercury and immediately conjoin Mars. So the Mercury Mars is actually pretty strong here. That doesn't make sense. No, that must be it. We must have skipped a day. Yeah, sorry. It's like the same number. So didn't see that, but yeah, it makes more sense. The moon separates from Mercury and applies to Mars for a full day. Um, let's look at that on the other chart. So, um, moons in Aries, um, so we got to go back a little bit here, see that, but the moon will be in Aries, um, applying to Mars, so the only aspect the moon makes is, um, you know, from Mercury it's nine, nine degrees and then the, the ten degrees until it gets to, uh, Mars. So we're really involved with the Mercury Mars, the transactions with with uh, the forward, direct, um, brash kind of activity, you know, not uh, uh, some people are like that, but it definitely could be you know heated heated language, heated words being said, you know, that the Moon has this mercurial light on it, maybe even has like some of this Jupiter thing, so it's it's um. Pretty spicy, I would say, overall, if you will. 
but the moon will separate from so it'll apply to Mars. Definitely sounds sounds spicy, sounds hot. Um, but separating from Mars and applying to Saturn. So we gotta kinda think about how close Mars and Saturn are now. Uh, Mars and Saturn, I don't think, really get along, <laughs> obviously, but, you know, there's, like, a sense where we have to um, make both happen or, or work with both ideas here. We have to work with the idea of um, forward action and uh, what we can do immediately, um, for better or worse, and um, what how that kind of works with the time. Um, like, what's the overall plan here? You know, the moon is waning in light um, so I guess towards more towards the end of the day we're more focused on you know kind of wrapping things up what what kind of works for like in view of the long-term situation but the moon will apply to Pluto um, forgive me if I forget what day we're on Wednesday, so we're getting into Wednesday with the moon squaring Pluto in the morning. You know, it's heavy Saturn Pluto thing. Um, not like, you know, it's just like the energy is pretty, pretty heavy, uh, pretty serious. But the moon will enter Taurus where it likes to be, and it make the sextile to the sun while it's on, it's um, near its good degree, its exalted degree, and then um, apply uh, to Uranus all the rest of that day. So. It's really just the moon, the sun, maybe kind of a reprieve, not kind of like the moon in Pisces was, uh, not too much really affecting the moon, affecting the moon too much. The moon is still far away from Saturn by then. Um, let's get that on the chart. 